So we are very excited and proud to have Amazon's premier attribution pre uh, partner uh, in off-marketplace advertising. Amt is here today, Accelerate, and, his, and uh, Josh Gebnett from uh, CEO and founder uh, of Amt is going to be sharing groundbreaking study that hopes to change the current landscape of e-commerce. Um, so he's going to tell you about some new research. Um, we're very proud to have him. Please come up on stage. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, first of all, thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Pattern Accelerate, for having me here. This is uh, an amazing show you guys put together. Second year only, it feels like you've been doing it for 10 years. Um, uh, what Catherine was just saying is uh, very true. I am extremely excited to share some of the most groundbreaking, uh, truly, truly groundbreaking, this, you'll be the first people to see this, uh, study across incremental lift for your enterprise brand uh, or any brand, uh, and also owning the buy box. So we, we've launched uh, over 4,000 sellers uh, on Amazon Attribution over the last year, and this right here today is what we've really been waiting for to share, which is how we can prove to you the incremental lift. So um, let's, let's jump into it. Um, the, the short kind of skeleton of what I'm going to go through today is... Um, how you, can, how you can drive incremental lift from uh, external advertising off marketplace, own the buy box uh, when you need to, and uh, get an untapped customer base of over three billion searches a day, and people are going more and more to Google. I don't know if you were at Neil's last talk. He uh, was definitely talking about people are researching more, they're going omni-channel, um, and we're gonna prove how that can dramatically affect your business. So um, we'll talk about a little bit, just level set, what the customer, uh, what the, sorry, what the current state of the union is. Um, then we'll talk about incremental lift, owning the buy box, and then I'm going to prove it with data science. All right, or basically data. All right, so this is uh, probably preaching to the choir, but historically and kind of up till today, the primary, that the core drivers of your revenue are that organic traffic within your marketplace. Uh, it's obviously amazing. Um, you, this is the reason why you sell on Amazon, Walmart, Target, and the different places. Uh, and then the second is uh, things like Amazon Ads and Walmart Connect and Roundel. Uh, you can bring in more customers with your sponsored ads. So uh, today, that is, I would say, the majority. Now, we have an amazing opportunity today, and I call it a blue ocean marketplace strategy. And the reason I know this, uh, we're, we... Uh, have essentially built this with the Amazon Attribution team since uh, Amazon Attribution launched, uh, and soon coming to other marketplaces as well. Uh, and we know how many advertisers or sellers, brands, are using Attribution. And it's a, it's a decent number, but it is a tip tip of the iceberg compared to the sellers that are out there. So today is the opportunity to get this amazing lift. Um, the, the, the key is to use them together. You don't want to replace Amazon ads by any, <laughs> they, they are extremely performant, but there is a good um, uh, back and forth, almost like a swing, if you will, pumping both together that gives you the maximum performance. So uh, I want to start by, again, stating the obvious, Google is still the king of search, right? Um, ChatGPT and Bing and others are coming, but today, it commands 93%. Some people say higher, a little bit higher, a little bit lower, but about the majority, the good majority of the world search. A uh, couple things to note here. Uh, so 3 billion product searches a day on Google, uh, relatively compared to Amazon has around 80, 90 million or so, which is nothing to, uh, it's not a trifle, but 3 billion is a massive, massive untapped audience. And um, today, as you've probably experienced, just like me as a consumer, a customer of uh, Amazon brands, uh, or sorry, Amazon sellers, is when you go there, there's, it's getting increasingly loud and noisy. And I think Wall Street Journal has published a couple articles about how many ads you see before you get to your product. Um, and so people are going, even now, going back to Google to do that research. And Neil was just referencing this. And the cool thing about what you can do is if you design the right ad, you can actually capture people right at that middle of the funnel where they're trying to do the research. It's a different um, buying motion than Amazon, which can be a bit more transactional, more bottom of the funnel. But you have the opportunity to bring them, helicopter them right into your storefront or your product to have them uh, experience your brand and product. So high intent, and Google is still commanding a ton of that search. Uh, this you've probably heard over and over as well. 
Uh, it's the year of profitability, right? We, there's, there's a whole movement towards not just growth, but we need to be profitable as well. So um, while brand marketing is still important, um, Neil also talked about TikTok and Meta and, and other social channels, um, you need to do those, but it matters how much profit you're making and what your performance is. Google is extremely performant and it's very measurable. Uh, thanks to Amazon's attribution, they've opened up. So, uh, and, and a little quote here from Forbes, it's no longer enough to see impressions and clicks. You need to see conversions and sales and add to carts. Uh, Okay, so um, last level set here and then we'll um, talk about how you can do this. And my hope is today, by the way, that you walk away with something that you can actually put into action this week or next week when you get back to the office. Uh, so historically, uh, there has been three, and these are broad strokes, right? Very broad strokes, three pillars that you scale your brand and marketplace. Um, first, you got to get discovered. Um, you want to attract high quality traffic to your listings, show the unique value proposition, show your brand. Uh, then you want to protect the brand. So uh, you want to differentiate, you want to show, uh, you know, rise above the noise in the marketplace. Uh, and then finally, present, we call it present the brand. So discovered, protect, present. Uh, and that's when you get to um, get more loyalty, get followers on your uh, Amazon store and so forth. Um, so now this, hasn't, this doesn't change, but now let's apply external traffic, Google ads, that only a fraction of the sellers on Amazon are, are fully utilizing today. Now you get to tap into 3 billion searches a day, which is you know, just under half the world's population, and drive high intent traffic into your store with an ad that's designed exactly right at the place when they're looking and doing their research in a relatively clean landscape. Uh, the second thing you get to do is instead of protecting the brand and other strategies, you literally can protect the brand by bypassing the whole marketplace. So imagine you had a super jet or a helicopter um, or a, an, an overpass that just dropped the customers right into your storefront or your product display, your PDP, and now you've brought them right to what they were looking for. They're going to see your amazing reviews, your A-plus content, uh, all the other things that makes your brand shine and they are gonna see a competitive price and purchase. Uh, and then finally, you get a, 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 another opportunity here in a different way. Instead of being in the marketplace mix and noise, you're gonna be able to create customer loyalty and create, a, a, I'd say, a disproportionately higher opportunity to upsell, cross-sell, uh, and get repeat customers, so subscribe and saves, uh, and so forth, which I'll show you in a anecdotal case study at the end here. So, Let's show you how it works, and I'm super excited to show you for the first time ever uh, the product that uh, Amazon has been like, whoa, we've never seen this before. Uh, so I hope this is a, a fun view for you guys, and you can um, get this too if you want to come talk to my team after. This is what your product looks like as, as an individual. You can also look at your entire brand uh, on a channel-by-channel -channel performance basis. In other words, your core channels of revenue, which is, again, we talked about organic which is why you're in the marketplace, uh, which is the green line. Uh, the yellow line would represent Amazon ads revenue. Uh, and then uh, Google revenue right now, just testing, right? Just a little blip on the bottom there of revenue from Amazon, or from Google into Amazon. And then at the top is your total revenue altogether. So that, that's just to orient you what you're looking at. The cool thing, and what I really want you to note is the blue line, but first let's talk about that amped delta. So that little magnified zoomed in spot there is when you, you see the dotted line, that's a campaign starting. And the lift is the lift that you get in organic traffic as soon as you start uh, your, your external traffic into Amazon. Uh, it doesn't happen exactly like that every time. Sometimes it's bigger, sometimes it's more flat, but, the more, but, but it does happen. The more important thing, and this is what's consistent, I would say 85% of the time, 90%, and the ones where it doesn't work, and we'll talk about that in a second, certain products just aren't built for Google and Amazon. They should just be core Amazon. Uh, but most of you in this room, it's gonna work for your products, um, is that beautiful blue line that slopes up and to the right. And so what that is, is the amped alpha effect or the external ads effect of incremental lift on your total revenue. So let that sink in for a second. Um, you've kept Amazon ads relatively flat. You're bringing in external advertising in just a very small amount. Imagine if you did more. And these guys, this, this particular company is doing a lot more now. 
and you have this beautiful slope of your organic revenue going up. So now for the first time ever, and I'm going to give you the, the big study in just a minute, um, you can actually leverage your, or I should say, weight how you spend externally based on incremental revenue. So this isn't revenue that is, um, uh, you're, not, you're not redirecting from uh, one ad platform to another ad platform to be more performant. This isn't taking away from your Amazon ads and the revenue. This is adding incremental net new revenue. And now it's measurable, and now you can optimize based on your incremental revenue. So here is what I've been so excited to share with Pattern. Um, again, first time we've been working on a white paper with Amazon. It will be coming out soon. Um, but this is truly groundbreaking. So uh, on average, well, actually, first, let me, let me set up the, uh, my little fire emoji. Um, let me set up what we, had, what we did uh, for the test. So we took 40 random brands out of our, our customer base, and we launched uh, uh, Amped uh, and Google Ads into Amazon. But we wanted to do an A-B test that was uh, non-promotional, non-holiday period, and see what the before and the after effect looked like. So the before effect is um, no amped, just running Amazon ads, um, and nothing extra promotional. And then the after effect is just adding amped, nothing else changing, uh, and what happens to your organic revenue. And here's the number. It wasn't 5%, it wasn't 10%. Neil Patel was talking about 8%, which is awesome in an incremental lift. There was a 25% incremental lift in revenue. I'm just going to pause and let that sink in. Literally a 25% in organic, that's the free revenue, right? You're not, you didn't pay ads for that. 25% lift across multiple categories, multiple brands and ASINs, uh, 40 altogether. And we're going to run this across a broader test as well. Uh, but I wanted to get this one out so I could present it to you today. Uh, and this was a controlled test. So we did before and after. Now, a question you might ask, and a smart one, would be, well, that's great, Joshua, but how much did you spend on Google Ads to get a 25% lift in organic, uh, incremental lift in organic revenue? And we checked that out as well. And the answer is, we spent very little, so much so that when we averaged the entire ad spend, and so we call that tacos, right? You guys are familiar with tacos, your total advertising cost of spend, which is basically, it eats into your profit margin. You lost about 0.6%, so basis points of profit when you launched external advertising into your storefront and your products. I feel like that is like, enough. I could like end the talk right here. Um, you should all go do Google Ads uh, tomorrow. It, it is extremely performant, and it is, um, it's wild, the results that we're seeing. We knew it was good. In fact, when we launched uh, Amped a, a couple of years ago, the, the customer, and we've had many customers that have just uh, been with us from the beginning, so we had quite a bit that signed up right, right away. Uh, and they knew. We couldn't show this yet this because we didn't have all the data science to piece apart what was the organic revenue and what was Amped revenue. Uh, but they just knew. They just saw their revenue going up, and when they turned Amped off, their revenue went back down, their organic revenue. And, uh, but now I'm so excited to say we can measure it, and now you can actually change your strategy because you're seeing how incremental and where it's, where it's going up and where it's not. Um, we did one more test on this that I'll show. Just to kind of, we really wanted to be double sure with the data science team, uh, and Amazon pressed us for this as well. Um, what if Amazon ads is, is held constant? Because we know that Amazon ads has an effect. Um, so we said, let's take a subset of these guys, um, which was still a good majority of them, that had, did, did not change their ad spend in Amazon more than 5%, one way or the other. Uh, and when that happened, the results stayed the same and actually got a little better. 26% lift, 26.3% uh, lift in organic revenue. I, I'm not sure what, again, um, this is incredibly exciting. I, I really, I feel like I can end the talk here, but I'm going to keep showing you some of those three, those, those examples that I, that I talked about at the beginning. Um, and then we also, of course, did the, the test to say, okay, how much did that affect your overall revenue and what did it cut into profit margin? And the answer is it only cut in 0.3%. So only a minimal amount, again, in fact, it, it got better when you controlled for Amazon ads. So uh, 
Uh, the, the moral of the story is if you're an enterprise or if you're an agency, which we have a, a, an agency platform as well because um, we, we want to be able to serve uh, multiple brands uh, to make it easy for you to control, come try it, talk to my team, they'll be here, and we're also in the exhibition hall. But, um, and whether you use Amped or not, please go do Google Ads. Um, make sure you do it right, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But it is, it is well worth the trial and the test. Okay, um, I also promised to talk about owning the buy box. Um, Anyone, by show of hands, has anyone ever lost a buy box? Anyone? No? Oh, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Talking to the right people, everyone. Okay. So um, this, this does not win the, uh, buy, the, the full buy box back, but it will control for the revenue loss, and it will help you win the, the, the buy box. What we're going to talk about is the buy box via the featured listing opportunity. And I'm going to give you an example, a case study. But first, let's talk about what that looks like and why it matters. So... Um, you guys all raise your hands, so I can go through this really quickly, but um, the, the FLO, when people come to your site and, and your store or your product and they don't get uh, the add to cart or buy now, they don't look at the list of the other you know, 15 or 20 sellers underneath. Uh, they look at what's the buy box. <laughs> so, um, and, and it's an estimated about 85% of all sales uh, on Amazon are made through the buy box. I think I personally have never bought something outside of the buy box, actually. Uh, I don't know if that's good or bad. But um, uh, and it, that's how powerful it is. So here's what it looks like to lose the buy box. So this massage gun, Toloco, they're, they're not a customer, um, th is, has lost the buy box here. They, um, it's, it's their product, it's their brand, but Eaglewood Trading um, has taken that buy box because probably in this case, and again, it's an Amazon secret how and who wins the buy box, but in this case, it is highly likely that they had a cheaper price. Simple as that. Competitor won the buy box, and now Toloco is one of 15 options that sit below the fold, which is probably not gonna get clicked. Um, it's painful for more than just the obvious, though, and so I just wanna hit this home, and again, you probably all feel this, so this is, um, I don't mean to, to rub the pain in, but what happens if you lose that, you, um, I mean, brand reputation right away, right? You have other people selling your product, you can't control for the customer success. You can't control for gray market. There's a whole number of things, right? And you're, you risk that brand loyalty. Um, number two, and maybe number one, the most important thing, you can't, you can't use Amazon ads, sponsored ads anymore. They, they fully stop your Amazon sponsored ads, pull those search listings. That is where the, the real pain hits. And then your organic rank drops. And then you have inventory issues because you have extra inventory that you can't move. Uh, and, and the logistics of that compound, and it, it just, it's a bad, bad situation. Uh, and, and this little um, highlight at the bottom, even, even a 1% fluctuation is enough to trigger a buy box loss. So uh, enter the power of Google Ads or external traffic. Now you have the power, and, and, and at a keyword level, we're going to talk about how accurate we can get with it, you know exactly how you can bring customers into your product pages into your storefront because you can directly target that landing page where, they, where you own the featured listing opportunity, the buy box. Um, and, and it's kind of a beautiful thing, right? It's, you're not competing with any of the traffic. You're not competing. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt your organic rank uh, because you're bypassing all of that and you bring people right in to your product display page and with, with the buy box owned. And so what you want to do is uh, adjust channel mix, um, either reallocate because that Amazon ad spend's not being used anymore, uh, and or just, again, add that incremental ad spend from Google to start lifting those sales back up. You recover revenue, you get your share of voice back, and you retain those customer, uh, the customer loyalty. So uh, here's uh, an example of what it looks like if you wanted to fly people in straight from a Google ad into your buy box. So now back to Toloco, they have won the featured listing opportunity, won the buy box, and they're back in business. Again, um, this, is, this is just a sample of what it would look like. So I wanna talk about a couple cases that are actually three case studies, um, uh, each have their own merit here, uh, to show that real live, in action, what does this look like? So the first case study um, is with one of the world's largest massage guns, who's one of our customers, uh, so not Toloco, um, they had this problem. They lost the buy box. Um, so bad news. Um, and they said, hey, uh, Amped, what can you do to regain the, uh, the buy box and get revenue back with your strategies? 
And we said, great, let's go to it. Um, and so we, we targeted their FLO. And uh, they, want, they started with a small spend, and they wanted to see what they could do to counter that and recover revenue. Um, and just a little bit of a backstory. They're, they're like I said, a global brand. Um, you for sure have heard of them. And they, uh, they, they, send, they have their own D2C website, so they had a, a very robust ad strategy to D2C, which is also one thing they wanted to compare. Google Ads to Amazon, which I know is um, probably some of your questions. Should I do both or one or the other? Uh, which we'll get to. Um, and then they also had a great uh, on Amazon PPC strategy with a great agency um, setting them up. So here's what happened, and I, 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 this is a painful slide. I hate looking at this every time I see it. Um, but as you look, the Amazon ad revenue basically plummets and flatlines when they lost the buy box um, in just under a week. And so, and, and, then, and then it stretches on. It's not just a, a couple day thing, right? This was over a month. And, um, and we started talking to them. You can see where we started talking to them about possibilities here. And, and they got it back for a little bit, and then it went away again. And so what they said is, what if we could bring in Google Ads to start reclaiming some of that revenue? Um, so they did that, and you'll see that orange line starts to creep back up and start to re starts to regain some of that lost revenue. Huge success, and now I'm happy to say they've accelerated that. And they had, I think it was close to a half a million dollar budget on Amazon ads, and now they've shifted that into Google, and they're watching their revenue climb back up. Not to mention, and you guys probably know this but uh, by now, uh, Amazon's done a good job at advertising it, but their brand referral bonus has also kicked in and added even more revenue as well. Uh, so a more kickback. They get, you get 10% back uh, on every sale you drive in from external ads. So uh, in summary, they, uh, oh, there we go. In summary, they added their Google Ads strategy. Their revenue recovery began. They had plans to, and they have plans to accelerate and have done so, and a strategy in place now for future to ensure against any other buy box losses. Uh, I wanted to mention this additional part here because uh, many of you probably have uh, a, a direct-to-consumer store. Uh, and a question often gets asked, should I do both? Should I do none? How do I think about that? Uh, and, and I'm going to give you a few of those in a minute. But real quickly, looking at just the, the results on directing people to, again, the world's, one of the world's best converting pieces of real estate on in e-commerce, right, on Amazon.com. Uh, it makes sense because they have an incredibly high domain authority with Google. So Google is going to prefer ads there. They know people are going to go with high intent to convert. Uh, and then it's also going to have a high quality ad listing just by the fact that you're going to Amazon. Their cost per click was 83% less than it was when going to direct to their consumer site. So they went to their .com. And if you spent $100 going to their .com, it cost them $17 to get the same traffic into Amazon which, by the way, probably had a higher conversion rate as well. Um, the second thing is their click-through volume. So they had over three times the amount of click-through for the same amount of, of impressions um, on their, uh, compared to their uh, direct-to-consumer site. And then finally, um, impressions relative to click-through. Uh, sorry, I said that different. They had more volume that actually landed. And then the ratio of people from, that just looked at the ad versus actually clicking it uh, was almost 30 times um, the, the amount that it was when it was just focusing on uh, their, their, their consumer site. Uh, again, it's the power of Amazon, right? Uh, but now Amazon's rewarding you, you can measure it, and uh, you can get a 26% lift in your organic sales. Um, also, one, one thing I want to uh, say is the organic 26%, uh, we believe that's the floor. And I'm about to show you a case study here, the next case study, of one that's a little bit higher. Um, and we think it, and we've seen it go even higher than this. Um, so we partnered uh, with a company called Jungle Scout. If anyone's been selling on Amazon, you probably know them. You've heard the name. Been around for a long time. Have one of the biggest data repositories on Amazon ever, besides Amazon. Uh, and they have. You're seeing the punchline right now. But uh, they also have their own products, and they like to test new um, new platforms like Amped, uh, and also their own their own new products. Uh, to see what works and what doesn't so they can share that with their customers. So we have a case study coming out soon with them. Um, they wanted to test this product. Uh, it was a, a puppy pee pad. So if anyone has puts, puppy, puppy pets, uh, it's a pretty cute um, 
uh, pee pad, though, which is necessary. We, we have a, a couple uh, team members who have new puppies. So they, they might want to buy one of these. Um, they, they said, okay, we already have a good product. We got good um, uh, you know, reviews. We got good pricing. We know we're competitive. Let's see what it looks like to add Google. Uh, they had some more specific goals because they're a little more sophisticated. They didn't say, I need to match my Amazon ACoS. They said, actually, I'm good if we get 60 to 100% on ACoS because they knew that is just a leading indicator of the actual value. And what they knew was number two is if that works, they're going to get a retail flywheel effect. Um, so that was, again, the core, probably the overarching goal was number two there. Let's prove that driving in external traffic is not just a little bit of revenue, but a lot of revenue. And then can we get new subscribe and save? And we're going to do this, and again, in a non-promotional, non-period. They, they tested January through February, actually January through March. Uh, and so let's see what happened. Um, so first, um, and, and, and this is where I wanted to kind of give you some of the frequently asked questions. Um, you want to build amazing campaigns. Um, again, our software helps you do that, shameless plug. Um, you also are going to want to, and you, you can do this yourself as well, uh, but you're going to want to make sure that you're not copying and reproducing your Amazon ad strategy. That is, um, that's a big no-no because that's, Amazon ad strategies are typically built for bottom of the funnel. Whereas Google, you want middle of the funnel where people are doing their researching. They want that clean environment where it's not just buy, 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 but what's the best, you know, and, get, and you want to be more descriptive in your ad there. Um, second thing, and we get this asked a lot, and what should I do both, Google and to my D2C? And the answer is yes, 100%. So there are two different kinds of buyers. There's the person who's going to try and buy the thing they, they need right away. They're going to go to Amazon, and they're going to click and convert. Um, there is the person that wants to have the brand experience and, um, you know, get to know your company and explore your website. That's a different kind of buyer. And that, by the way, that person could be the same person yesterday. You know, they could switch from personality A to personality B on the given day. But in, in a given moment, someone's going to be one or the other. Um, and, and I've been working with Google Ads for over a decade. Uh, in fact, our company uh, was a Google Ads company from, for about seven years before we moved into marketplaces. Um, uh, D to C. And we have an old, and you guys have probably heard this, uh, in Google you want to cover the page. You want to own the shopping, you want to own the SEO result, you want to own the sponsored result, and uh, maybe a second one if you could. And what you can do today um, is own the second, or I guess the fourth result, which is Google Ads into your Amazon store. And you're not going to cannibalize. We've seen a, a, a fragment of a percentage of, of cannibalization that we can measure, but it's, your, it's overall incremental on both the D2C as well as the Amazon store. Uh, so that's key. And then last, last question, and um, this or you know, something we get asked a lot is, well, why don't we just feed this information back into Google so we can just let Google run its thing, just like connect the two together? Uh, as Amazon's premier attribution partner, um, I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you to not do that. It's strictly against their TOS, um, and you could you know, lose the ability to do attribution or worse. Um, so make sure that you are just sending uh, traffic there, but not sending the, con the conversion information back. So um, then you want to leverage the attribution and down to the keyword, and then calculate return on investment. So here's what that looks like. We built the, the great ads, uh, or they built the great ads. Uh, using um, the platform, and then they said, okay, let's look at what the direct attribution results are. So this is the first couple of months, um, and as you can see, we're already hitting within their, their target of 60 to 100%. Uh, in fact, all of them were better. But what's great is you can click in and look at an individual campaign's keywords, and now you can double down and correct in the right places. So evidently, people like searching for washable dog pads more than they do reusable dog pee pads. Um, let's double down on washable dog pads and reduce our spend on reusable dog pee pads, as an example. And then you continue to increase and, uh, and incrementally improve the performance. So the next thing that we saw was, and this is a little bit of a lagging indicator, but their bestseller rank started rocketing up. They, they gained uh, just under 200 points uh, in their bestseller rank for this product uh, within their category from when they started using uh, AMP or external traffic to when they ended. And um, as, I, as I promised, 
they wanted to test on that. Uh, what, what's the net lift on new subscribe and saves for that lifetime value? And you can see already, again, just the first couple of months, we're seeing a lift from what last year's was. Um, and again, the only dif different thing they were doing this year was adding uh, Google Ads. All right, so here's the, um, that wow factor you saw at the beginning. Um, this brand basically had a Christmas to their Christmas. So you'll look, th this uh, is October, November, December. Uh, that is their first, uh, you know, no amped. They're just running, they're running Google, they're no, not running Google ads. And they're having great holiday sales, as you can see. Uh, and then typically the doldrums, right, as you drop off in January and February into March, they actually didn't drop off. In fact, they didn't even stay the same. They, they went up. Uh, and the only thing they did different, they kept Amazon ads the same, flat, if not spending a little less. The only thing they did different was add in Google ads from Amped, and they had a 217% increase in their organic revenue. I mean, again, this is like my, I feel like, drop the mic, just go, just go try it. <laughs> Even if you don't use Amped, go, go just try it. it. It is incredible what it does to your performance. Um, so the summary, uh, what they did is they launched two campaigns. Uh, they tested it. They concluded, yes, indeed, people shop on Google. Uh, they beat their goals, uh, their ACOS goals. They hit that huge high mark uh, in organic sales, bestseller rank, and increased subscriptions. They hit all their goals they wanted. It was awesome. All right, last case study. And then after this, I have a gift for those of you uh, that want from my data science team. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, Precision Pro is a golf uh, company. They sell a lot of amazing products. They also have a robust Amazon PPC strategy, but they wanted to add what external traffic could do as an omni-channel uh, uh, play. So, um, so here's what they did. In fact, I just did the, I added the screenshot just a couple days ago. I Googled um, randomly, which the ad doesn't always show up, uh, but I did Amazon Golf Range Finder and there's their ad, um, powered by Amped, showing up right at the top. It's exactly where you want it. And it's beautiful, right? You're seeing great reviews, good price. It's describing what you need. You click in and you buy it. And then that has this amazing impact within Amazon, uh, that, that keyword golf range finder that they wanna be known for gets launched and it went from, when they started in January 19th, position 48, is it showing up there? It's not, it got cut off on mine. It's position, it was at position 48 uh, and it went to position eight. So they gained 40 ranking points in two months and then it continued to climb. Uh, and then here is their ACOS goals. So they got a 25% uh, advertising cost of sale. Now some of you wanna be in single digits and that's fine. But what we're, and, and, and to be clear, uh, this is just the direct results. So directly putting Google ads into their Amazon storefront, they got 25%. That does not include all of the organic sales. They weren't part of the study when we measured organic sales. So this number is probably close to negative ACOS at this point. Um, so again, uh, if, if I had to summarize all of this, and hopefully we'll have time for a few questions here, Go right now, try Google Ads to Amazon strategy. Uh, my team's here, we're in the exhibition hall, we can answer any other questions you might have. Uh, and get your 26% of incremental lift uh, in organic revenue cranking. Uh, try it, uh, I think you're gonna like it. Uh, and then also, if you need to uh, not worry, if you never wanna worry about losing the buy box again, uh, use this as a strategy as well and you can drop people right into, you know, airlift them into your product uh, FLO. And, and of course, the most important is there's three billion people searching out there. They're not all on Amazon. In fact, even the people that are on Amazon are now doing more research on Google. Let's go get them. Um, so here's the gift that I promised. Um, we have a uh, completely automated platform called Benchmark. Um, you don't have to talk to any of our team if you want to just go test it out. Uh, it's running live. Yeah, take a screenshot of that and you get to try all your ASINs and see what works. And better than that, we'll actually give you the best keywords that you should start with um, listed there and you can sort and rank uh, and, and, and have a fun time with it. And again, please you know, feel free to message to our team too and we can answer any additional questions you have. Uh, but that's set and ready to go. Again, don't need to talk to anyone, just come in and try it. Um, uh, last, uh, if you wanna get a hold of me for any questions afterwards, please do. There's my LinkedIn and my email. And if there's any questions here, I think we maybe have a few minutes or not. Yeah. Yep. You can raise your hand and we'll have a runner come around to you. Thank you. 
Do you um, do you recommend after a certain period of time that customers take a little bit of their Amazon budget and kind of shift that over to Google? <laughs> you know, so it's a fair question. Um, what we care about is incrementality. And I think, I, I'd imagine your brand would care about that too. So if your Amazon ads are performant and then you're adding a net spend, a net new spend, but it's making you like, you know, the kind of age old advertising, right? If you put in a dollar and outcomes four, like it's infinite, right? Your budget's infinite. Um, so I would say you'd want to add, it would be additive. Um, of course, I'm a partner with Amazon, so I want to, but they do work together. Um, you don't want, you want, you don't want to just shift to one. So you would want to keep that. Now, I would, where I would differ that is if your Amazon ads is kind of hit a ceiling and it's no, because of all the competition now, that would be a potential case where it's, if you're losing, you know, your ACOS numbers aren't hitting, but when you add in here and the incremental revenue mix is better, then yes, I would say maybe, maybe that would be a time. But in general, we recommend keeping them and then adding more, adding more Google ads. Does that answer your question? Yep. And add Google on top of it. And then the organic revenue, again, just in case you didn't hear it, 26% with no decrease in profit, 26% more sales of organic sales. Right? Yes, just add is the, is the short. Now, and then the only thing that would change is if your Amazon ads are not performing anymore. But you should stop at that point anyway. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh, hey. With a lot of brands, they they like to separate D 2 C and Amazon to where they're in two silos. How have you found works best in attributing something like this as a D 2 C effort or mm -hmm. as an Amazon effort? Yeah, great question. I'll try and reiterate. So just to make sure I understand, they want a silo. They don't want this competition of like, hey, don't put Google spend to D 2 C because you might cannibalize that. Is that accurate? Yeah. Um, and, and so this is where I was talking um, earlier. There's, there's two kinds of buyers that we have found, like generically across the world. They're going to be the person that wants to go to the marketplace and buy it because it's easy. They trust, you know, Amazon or Walmart or Target. Um, and then there's going to be the customer that wants to go to your website. Uh, what we have found, and especially with the brand referral bonus um, and the organic uh, flywheel that you get going, the net impact is so positive, it outweighs any incremental, any tiny bit of cannibalization that might happen. But what we found is that there's actually not much cannibalization because what your strategy is going to be is focusing the people that were going to go to Amazon anyway to Amazon. So you'll use Amazon best golf range finder to use that example, right? Versus you might Amazon golf range finder, you might not use those, only those keywords to go to Amazon. You might have those going to your site. So there's a strategy in how you divvy it up, but you still want to run ads to both at the same time. Absolutely. <laughs> Great stuff, Josh. Thanks, mate. Um, so my question is, how careful do you have to be when running Google Ads to your product? Say, say it one more time. How careful do you have to be when running Google Ads to your product? Because I've noticed some software out there, they provide landing pages to like pre-vet them. And I know you said some, you mentioned something about sending qualified leads through your Google Ads. How, how careful do you have to be? And I, I guess, how do you do that? Because if I started running Google Ads and getting all this unqualified traffic, how impactful negatively would that be to my listing? I see what you're saying. So you're saying you, you don't want to run bad advertising into your Amazon listing because you might that might affect your rankings. Yeah. Is that right? As always, even within, even within Amazon, right, you want to make sure you have good ad quality for the type of customers you're, you're, you're bringing there. And again, this is where, um, again, not to pitch our software, but our software helps you create that good ad that's not going to have that impact. Um, what Amazon cares about is people landing on your featured listing. They care about people landing on your storefront. And guess what? The ads literally do that. Just by de facto, they're going to land there. And obviously, you get a much bigger bump if they add to a cart and then, of course, if you sell. So you want what you, but the, the biggest thing, and this is just kind of, it feels very uh, like table stakes, but I'm just going to say it. You want to be very integrous or have integrity or your ad to have integrity to really describe what they're going. Don't, no bait and switch, no Facebook type ads. You want to describe it, say exactly what they're going to get because when they land and they're like, oh yeah, it's exactly what I was coming for, they're going to click add it to cart and buy it because they know that they trust the space. So I would say the only advice I'd say there is yes, make sure it's very representative. Don't just try and 
grab in a swoop of, of, of traffic. Yep. Beautiful, thanks. Yep. Another question. Um, do you, like, let's say, just as an easy number, monthly ad spend on Amazon is 10,000. Do you mm -hmm. have a formula you say we're going to do X percentage of your yeah. Amazon ad spend, or do you look at everything based on the ASIN and you have some technology that helps you determine? Both. Uh, but we, if you want to just, just like an answer for the audience in general, um, we typically think that you should be net adding uh, at maturity another. 20 to 30 percent. So you're going to start at like 15, 25 dollars a day, right? When you start testing a given product, ASIN. Uh, but as that grows, we believe that that maturity. Um, and I, I should I should actually caveat this with that's maturity today. I think we're going to hit a, a spot where it's going to be it could be close to equal. So and, and I'd say this for everyone. This is today. Um, uh, it's, it's tip of the iceberg, right? I think at the end of next year and potentially even the end of this year, it will be table stakes. If you're not running Google Ads to Amazon, you're, you're missing. Um, so but back to your question, how much should you spend? I would say if you're spending $10,000 a day, plan on spending $2,000 to $3,000 on Google Ads would be a good kind of rule of thumb. But you won't start there. You'll, you'll, you'll walk up to that as you dial in your ads. And yes, it does. It will be specific, and we do use our technology to help you with that. Yeah. I think that might I think that's the time, yeah. be the end. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate your time. For coming.